Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to talk about home gyms, and we'd like to thank Greg Johnson for liking and sharing the podcast. And we're waiting for book 11 to get back from the editor, and we'll let you know when it's going to be released on Amazon. And we're going to have 11 chapters in book 11. (laughs) Some of the first exercise equipment dates back to the ancient Greeks around 700 BC, and they created weights made from stone or metal with a hole in it so it could be lifted. Some kind of look like a kettlebell, others look like an upside down U, so you could grip it in your hand. Hmm. They had a bunch of different types. And weights that have been discovered by archaeologists range in weight from 4 to 20 pounds. Around 200 A.D., the Roman physician Galen recommended using weights to strengthen the body and ward off disease, and he recommended curls, lunges, and deadlifts after watching gladiators train. (laughs) One of the oldest fitness systems is the Charles Atlas Mail Order Fitness Course, and this was advertised in comic books starting in the 1930s. And I spoke to the Charles Atlas Company, and they're still selling these exercise courses 91 years later. And the company was purchased by Jeffrey Hogue, who took the course when he was 15 years old. (laughs) Charles Atlas said he had sand kicked in his face by a bully at a beach in front of a good-looking gal. And he was laughed at because they were calling him a 97-pound weakling. (laughs) So he decided to create this training program to transform his body. And after months of training, he had a system that he said can be followed by anyone, 10 to 100. And you can check out their system at charlesatlas.com. It's C-H-A-R-L-E-S-A-T-L-A-S dot com. Hmm. Interesting. Mayo Clinic says regular exercise helps control weight. It improves your heart health. It increases good cholesterol, it lowers bad cholesterol, it helps manage high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, depression, anxiety, many types of cancer, arthritis. It increases your balance, so it reduces your risk of falling. It lowers the risk of dementia and Alzheimer's, it boosts energy and helps you get a better night's sleep. So it's a good thing. (laughs) The Department of Health and Human Services recommends 150 minutes of moderate aerobic activity a week or 75 minutes of vigorous aerobic activity or a combination of the two. They suggest strength training for all the major muscle groups at least two times a week and add balancing exercises, especially if you're older, but check with a doctor first before you start any exercise routine. The National Sleep Foundation says as little as 10 minutes of aerobic exercise early in the day has been found to help with sleep, and strength training helps to improve the quality of your sleep. Yoga, stretching, and breathing exercises are helpful for people with insomnia if you do daily yoga for at least eight weeks. Public Health England says just 10 minutes of aerobic activity a day can reduce the risk of early death by 15%. And they say the key is consistency. They suggest high-intensity interval aerobics, strength training, and stretching. Okay. From research on people trying to maintain a consistent workout routine, people who exercise in the morning have a higher rate of sticking with it for longer periods. The British Journal of Health Psychology found people who created a plan of when they're going to work out and what their workout will be had about a 90% success rate of making time for exercise every week. So they suggest setting a notification on your phone, keeping track on your calendar, or keeping a journal to help establish the habit. Mm -hmm. I used to keep track of all my different workout routines to keep me motivated and track my gains. Do you still do that? Yeah, once in a while I do, just to kind of motivate myself and see where I am, kind of compare back with some of these notebooks that I have. So in 1990, I've got the spiral notebook that goes back to 1990 when I bought my first piece of gym equipment, which was a Soloflex, which I still have and I still use. 
and I was in a condo and only had a small area in this room I used as my office, and that's where I still had my roll-top desk. We <laughs> talked about that on the desk episode. I wanted to do strength training, but I didn't have the room for free weights. And what I liked about the Soloflex is it used rubber weight bands, so you didn't have to use plates. Okay. And it fit in an area. I bought a mat that was six foot by four foot, and it fit into that area. And I thought I should put on some muscles after I offered to help a family move their belongings. This was from a house I bought, and the wife asked me how I could help since I had chicken muscles. <laughs> When you're planning a home gym, you want to think about the types of exercise you want to do. The Harvard Medical School says the four most important exercises for health and a better quality of life are aerobic, strength, stretching, and balance. Where are you going to be working out? How much room you have? How many people will be using the area or the equipment? And what's your budget? You might want to start out small and see if you're going to stick with it before you spend a lot of money on equipment you may not use. Right. One year for Christmas, my parents got me and my sister a treadmill. Okay, That's That cool. we did not ask for. <laughs> nor did we use for, I mean, I think it sat in the corner for years. And your parents both used it? No. They, the not. best gift ever. But it's like, why would you just buy us a treadmill? I mean, I'm sure it costs a lot of money at the time. Right, right. One year they bought us a trampoline. Oh, that's kind of cool. Like an, a little tiny trampoline. Oh, like, a, like an exercise trampoline. But yeah, it oh. was, but it was weird. She always gets us weird things. <laughs> well, that's nice. I mean, it's they're thinking about your health. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> if you have a room in a basement or a lower level with a concrete slab floor, you can get heavy-duty equipment with multiple workout stations and weight stacks or free weights with plenty of plates and dumbbells. Just compare and check the suggested area recommended for the floor space or any height restrictions with machines. Yeah, it'd suck if you bought it and it doesn't fit. Yeah, or you can't use the machine all the way up to its, <laughs> its recommended height. When I set up my equipment in the lower level of this house I'm in now, it has a concrete slab. My Soloflex, I added iron plate bars to the main bar so I don't have to use the rubber weight bands. I can use plates. Are you strong enough for that now? <laughs> yes. So I have a plate rack that I have. I have the leg extension for the Soloflex, the fly attachment. I have a rack for all my rubber weights. I have a leg press machine that takes metal plates. I've got a dumbbell rack with two levels from 60 pounds down to 10 pounds. I've got a curling bar, a punching bag, and I've got the Soloflex on a rubber mat, six foot by four foot. And I have the leg press on a rubber mat, six foot by four foot. I put in commercial grade carpet that's moisture resistant because it's in the basement. And, and you sweat a lot. And, right. And when we spoke to Infinity Woven Products about carpet for basements, mm -hmm. they recommended for a basement gym use luxury vinyl carpet. If the basement ever gets wet, you can just dry it up with a wet dry vac and then use fans over the carpet. Right. How big is this room? It's 12 feet by 11 feet. And if you follow us on Instagram, well, you should follow us on Instagram. I'll put some pictures on Monday of my home gym. <laughs> Fix it, home improvement. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be setting up a gym in a room over wood floor joists or on a second floor, you need to be conscious of the weight of your equipment and how you set up the room. Most town building codes have a live load capacity of 30 pounds per square feet for bedrooms and 40 pounds per square feet for non-sleeping rooms. So what does that mean? Live load rating? Yes. Or live load capacity, that's everything in the room plus people. Okay. In general, if you have a 10 foot by 10 foot room that was a bedroom that you want to convert to a gym, 10 times 10 is 100 square feet. Now we're doing math. So, yes. so 100 square feet times 30 pounds per square foot gives you a 3,000 pound weight limit for that room if all the weight is evenly distributed. You wouldn't want to put a heavy piece of equipment in the middle of the joist because over time the wood could sag, damaging drywall below it if you're on a second floor or potentially damaging the joist. If you do have heavy equipment, the strongest part of the joists are at the ends of the joists against the wall and over a supporting beam. So you'd want to set up your equipment near the walls and over load-bearing walls just to be safe. Hmm. But if you're putting in heavy equipment in a room over wood joists, 
I would talk to a structural engineer or call your local building inspector. Okay. I went to a couple physical therapy clinics to see what they suggested for a home gym and what equipment they had. And both of the clinics I went to had regular stationary bikes and recumbent bikes. What does that mean? So a recumbent bike has back support, which they said is good for older people. And they said most people find that more comfortable. The pedals are in front of the bike, so you kind of lay back while you're pedaling this. Huh. It reduces the stress on joints and your lower back. They recommended the company's Cybex. It's C-Y-B-E-X, Life Fitness, Schwinn. And sports art, that's cool that Schwinn does a recumbent bike. You're not going to spell Schwinn? Schwinn, S-C-H-W-I-N-N. And they both recommended the New Step recumbent bike. It's capital N-U, capital S-T-E-P. It has full foot pedals, so you push it kind of like a stair stepper. And it has handles to work your upper body. They say it's very effective, but it's a high-end machine. So probably more expensive? Right. Both clinics had treadmills, rowing machines, elliptical machines, and the total gym. And the clinic suggested if you're setting up a home gym for older family members, get equipment that they can get on and off of safely. And they, yeah, and they said you should go test it out at somewhere where they have machines on display or maybe go to a physical therapy clinic. They said balance becomes a problem with older adults, and machines like the elliptical can be challenging to get on and off safely. Right. And both clinics said if you're young or old, focus on aerobics and strength. As you get older, you should focus on leg strength and balance. Right. I spoke to Total Gym and got some information from Rosalie Brown. She's a fitness instructor and a personal trainer. Their entry-level machine has 12 levels of resistance, and you can do over 60 different exercises. Cool. And this has a bench that you sit or lay on, and it slides on two rails that you lower or raise to change the resistance. Mm -hmm. It has pulleys for your upper body. You can do squats, pull-ups, bicep curls, shoulder and chest presses, plus a variety of other exercises. And they have different models depending on your body weight and additional accessories. Their entry-level unit is only 15.5 inches wide, 93 inches long, and 43.25 inches high. And it folds up to 15.5 inches wide, 50.5 inches long, and 8 inches high. Hmm, So it's convenient if you have a small area. And not only was the total gym recommended by the two physical therapy clinics I went to, Chuck Norris recommends the Total Gym. (laughs) If you don't have a lot of room for equipment, you can start with bodyweight workouts and equipment that doesn't have to be kept out. You can get a pull-up bar that wedges itself at a doorway. Don't you have one of these? Yeah, yeah. Works very effective. Can you do any pull-ups? Yeah, I can do like three. (laughs) TRX band, so it's just the letter T, R, and X. These can be attached to a closed door, and you can do aerobic and strength exercises. When I spoke to the Charles Atlas Company, they said their workout routine just needs two chairs. John Hopkins University said the four types of exercise you want to do regularly for good health are strength, aerobic, balance, and flexibility. And they say these can be done without machines if you don't have the room. Right. The University of Montana recommends high-intensity interval training for good health. They say it burns more calories during and after the workout. You're more likely to stick with it. It boosts endurance and overall health. It increases the amount of oxygen your body uses, and you get more results in less time. And there's a wide range of exercises to keep it interesting. And you can do high-intensity interval training with swimming, cycling, rowing, floor exercises, or sprinting. And you can incorporate it with or without gym equipment. Okay. Mayo Clinic suggests 30 seconds of intense exercise and then three to four minutes of less intense exercise. Or start with four to seven minute Tabata workouts. What's that? Tabata is 20 seconds of high-intensity exercise, and then you take a 10-second rest. It was developed by a Japanese scientist who studied moderate and high-intensity training. He took one group, and they moderately exercised for an hour a day, five days a week for six weeks. 
He compared that against a second group that had high intensity 20 second intervals. So they would work out intensely for 20 seconds, take a 10 second rest, and only do this for four minutes, mm -hmm. five days a week for six weeks. And after the six weeks, that second group with the four minute workout had better results in their body's oxygen use and their short term anaerobic use of ATP, which your body uses for muscle energy. Okay. So amazing how he said it was as effective to have this four minute workout a day right. compared to an hour. That's cool. There are a lot of Tabata videos that you can watch on YouTube. Yeah, I do this almost every day. I do a four minute. <laughs> <laughs> I alternate between the four and the seven. When I'm feeling strong, I yeah, do the seven-minute workout. I was very workout. whiny after the seven-minute one. <laughs> and then, so I do this almost every day, Tabata, and then usually twice a week, then I'll do weight training. Cool. And then stretching every night. Nice. Boom. <laughs> if you're looking at home gym equipment for strength training and you don't have a lot of space, or if you're limited on how much weight you can have in that space... Total Gym, Solo Flex, and Bow Flex are all good choices. Total Gym uses your body weight. Solo Flex uses those rubber weight bands. And Bow Flex uses rods that you flex. Right. So you attach cables to the rods and you can adjust the amount of weight. And all three of these are great for strength training. They don't take up a lot of room. If you want to build muscle, though, Solo Flex and Bow Flex will allow you to exceed your body weight. Right. If you're setting up in an area and it doesn't matter how much weight you have, you can get gym equipment with weight stacks and multiple stations. And this is good for a full body strength workout. You should compare how many exercises and the total weight limits. If the weight stack is 120 pounds, is that going to be enough for what you can lift or what you ultimately want to lift? Many will have 150 pound or 200 or 200 plus weight stacks. Some come with multiple weight stacks, so you can work out with someone else at the same time. What is a weight stack? So it's generally a stack of rectangular plates, and you put a pin under, you know, how much you want to lift at a time. So you can start out with light weights and slowly build to heavier weights. Okay. GQ Magazine interviewed a doctor in peak training methodology, and he recommended building a workout routine around the bench press, pull-ups or rows, deadlift, squat, and plank, and then add aerobics and stretching. So check the exercises a machine is set up for right. and how many different variations you can do. Mm -hmm. If you like free weights using dumbbells and barbells, look at squat racks and bench racks for safety. So you don't need a spotter for heavy weight. You can set up a bar at the lowest position and go to failure and just let it set on that bar so you don't get crushed. <laughs> And that's what I like about the solo flex I have. I can set my bar to the lowest height. Like if I'm doing a bench press, I can set that bar just above my chest mm -hmm. and I can lift a failure. And if I can't push it up anymore, you know, I'm not crushed when I'm working out by that's myself. That's important. Yeah. <laughs> if you're setting up a workout area in your basement, air quality matters when you're working out. When you exercise, you're taking in more air and you're breathing more often. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency reports that the air quality in most homes is five times more polluted than outside air. Wow. The EPA says indoor air quality is one of their top five environmental concerns for public health. Hmm. They're estimating six out of every ten homes are sick, which means the amount of indoor airborne pollutants are hazardous to your health. Great. I spoke to a company called Easy Breathe. It's just the letter E, the letter Z, and then capital B-R-E-A-T-H-E. They have a basement ventilation system that reduces mold, mildew, allergens. It helps control humidity and odor, and it improves the overall indoor air quality. The EPA is recommending 6 to 10 complete air exchanges in your home every day. Hmm. And ventilation systems installed on the lowest level are the most effective. And you can check them out at easybreathe.com. Some top rated home gyms are Total Gym, Solo Flex, Bow Flex, Bodycraft, Marcy, it's M A R C Y, Body Solid, X Mark, it's just the letter X, capital M A R K, and Weeder, W E I D E R. Some top rated rowing machines, Concept 
two, C-O-N-C-E-P-T, and then the number two, City Row and Nordic Track. Some top-rated bikes, Peloton, P-E-L-O-T-O-N, Kaiser, K-E-I-S-E-R, and Schwinn. Treadmills, Nordic Track, Techno Gym, it's T-E-C-H-N-O-G-Y-M, Life Fitness, and Horizon. Great. Do you have anything else to add? When you're setting up an area in your home for a home gym and you're comparing equipment, the four main types of exercise for health and a better quality of life are aerobic, strength, stretching, and balance. So look for equipment that will help cover all those areas. Right. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, CastBox, or your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our eBooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 10, and soon book 11 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us on Instagram, Fix It Home Improvement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.